Good to meet you. Welcome to Framley Features. You're on episode four here and proud class of 2004. And I, I like this feature because it's alum to alum. So That's welcome right. aboard. Yeah. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Uh, likewise, I'm excited to be here. This is great. Thank you. I like how you've positioned everything in the background with your business, but you've got the Framingham State banner there. That's uh, the pennant. Right there. Hangs proud. That's right. <laughs> Every Zoom call, it's in the background. Nice. I hope everyone knows what a pennant is, right? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> well, it's it's a bit of a, a bit of a throwback, but I, I still love having it around. Yeah. Tell us how inspirational uh, Framingham State was to your career. Oh, uh, good question. Uh, so what it was for me was more a foundation. Um, before that, I actually I went to Keefe Tech and, and got, uh, you know, the groundwork laid for for graphic design. But what Framingham State did for me was kind of um, you know, kind of water that seed that had been planted and, and really allow it to grow between working with Professor Dowling, uh, Professor Beck, who I think is retired, uh, Jim Eng, uh, Professor Anderson, like all of them really, uh, really helped water that seed and, and really helped it grow. And I, I, I came to, I came out of there with so much more of a, I guess, organic knowledge of what art and design really was because before then it was just really cool stuff I just like to make really cool stuff and it looked cool but at Framingham State what I learned is like there's a rhyme and a reason for all these things and to really make something truly beautiful and natural and organic you need to have these reasons behind it you need to have this flow that really tells a story and it can still be something that looks cool but it has to be something that really pulls the viewer in, um, inspires you to create it, and just uh, all around draws eyes for all the right reasons. And when you're younger, you just all you're caring about is just making that design. So it seems oh, like yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's just staying in the lines and making something cool and showing it to your friends. And and I mean, I I I joke that I I half joke that I got into design. Because when I was a kid and, you know, you had to do book reports, um, I would spend more time drawing the cover of the book report than I would <laughs> actually working on the book report. So I'd get like a D <laughs> if I was yeah. lucky on the book report, but I'd make this killer cover. Uh, and, and that always kind of, I always kind of went in that direction. Yeah. You know what I love about this time is that I, I'm a creative person. You are you obviously being in, in broadcasting and what you do is now the time we're living in, you can really make a living in that where I think back in the day, maybe people weren't sure about being a, a news anchor or a graphic designer. I kind of feel like Keith Tech is way ahead of its time because there are people that are creative in that way. Mm -hmm. And you weren't really told to be creative back. It was being a lawyer, being in business, but oh yeah, you know, look at how the world has exploded now with, with people like yourself. Oh, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, think of, you know, I mean, we're, we're both roughly the same age and think of growing up in, you know, in our time. And it was all about being a doctor, being a lawyer, yeah. uh, you know, being a banker, getting into those industries. And it, you're, you're absolutely right. It wasn't about those intangible um, fields or even those creative tangible fields. Um, they, they you either didn't know they were available to you or um, you, you weren't driven in that direction. Yes. And I do, and to your point, I do love that we're in, an, we're in a time where more people can explore their creativity, can explore these outlets. And I mean, obviously the internet has a ton to do with that. I mean, you, you pretty much you know, hit the nail on the head that guys like you and us, before the advent of the internet, it was a lot harder for, for guys like us to get this creativity out. You know, yeah. you're having a YouTube channel. I mean, that you couldn't do that years ago. You, I mean, you had to, you know, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but you start at the bottom and slowly work your way up. Maybe you start as like an intern working in broadcasting and then work your way up to the, to the big chair. Yep. And the same thing in design, you, you know, you're working in a basement somewhere, um, you know, maybe in a mail room and then you work your way up or you're doing sketches, but it's, it's certainly, um, made things easier for for creative types to be able to get their voices heard because of you know different outlets and I'll just speak from from a design standpoint you know there's different portfolio sites that you can go to there's uh, Behance and Dribble um, there there I mean that's just two of, of a thousand out there 
Um, plus, uh, with you know social media being what it is, yeah, you put a piece of artwork out there, and all of a sudden, it's picked up by you know hundreds, if not thousands, of people. Um, and that's thankfully that's how I get a lot of my business is through referrals and people seeing work on the Fat Bass Design um, Instagram page or, or on the website, and and they reach out to us. But without this platform. I wouldn't have that. I'd be knocking on doors and making phone calls. Yeah. Yeah. It's a uh, yeah. Totally different world. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's positive. I mean, for, I think anything can be negative. That's easy to do with, with yeah. social media and internet, but it has created so much business. And, yeah. and during the time we're living in right now, people probably watching this years later, but during a pandemic, you can work like you are from home you can start your own business. Uh, the girl I had on last week, Maria, who is a 17 graduate, her best friend wanted to write a book. She needed an illustrator and she illustrated a children's book, which they put on Amazon. Wow. Now, ma yeah, I mean, you couldn't do, like you said, uh, if you wanted to be in TV, you'd have to work at a TV station. If you wanted to write, you had to write for a newspaper um, mm -hmm. to illustrate a children's book. You wouldn't be able to just put it and have it for commercial sale. No. Yeah. No. It's, it's, uh, it's just, it's, it's wild how, how times have changed. And you bring up the point of the, the working from home thing. I mean, I think if there's a silver, I'm, I'm an optimist by nature. If, yeah. if there's a silver lining to this pandemic, it's that we've learned that we don't need to go to an office sure. five days a week. You know, we can do this from home. Now there is a downside to that. You're a little bit more available after hours. People now know that, oh, you can pick up the phone at, seven o'clock at night, just as easily as you can jump online at 745 in the morning. But I think the trade-off is worth it both for, you know, uh, as, as, you know, as, as people want to be closer to their families, you now have the option to be with your family or to kind of get that social outlet, which as humans, we all need go into the office and be with your coworkers and, and, and your friends. But, um, from an environmental standpoint, you know, there's less people on the road, um, cost savings for businesses so they don't have to um, rent out these office spaces, uh, cost savings for people so they don't have to pay uh, for transportation to go in. There's just, there's yeah. so many different ways you can go. Um, but I think overall, and you touched on this, is that, um, you know, there, there's so much good on the internet that it's unfortunate that the headlines are made up of everything that's negative, but there's so much good you can take out of this. Yes. If you look at the right outlets and, and you kind of focus yourself in the, in those areas. I mean, I've, I'm a very amateur Adobe uh, suite user. I taught myself InDesign basically from another person that helped me, but YouTube Hi. videos, uh, Photoshop, same mm -hmm. thing. And those are such little things that you take for granted because how else would you figure out how to maybe dim a picture? It, you'd yeah. have to call somebody, but it's nice not having to do that, right? <laughs> oh God, it's, it's, it's so nice. <laughs> YouTube and, and all these online tutorials have been such a godsend. Yeah. Um, there, I mean, I've been doing this for, God, I guess, 20 years now. Isn't it? I graduated in yes. old, yeah, almost 20 years now. So, and there are still times when, you know, I, I think to myself, there's got to be an easier way to do, to get from A to Z for whatever this project is. And I'll look on YouTube or I'll look on, um, you know, Adobe has a bunch of tutorials in their suites. Um, and I'm only looking, I have my big monitor right here. <laughs> That's why, yeah. but, um, they have a bunch of tutorials in their suites that, uh, that kind of, you know, lead you down these paths of, of figuring out these different things. I, I figured out something just last month where it, it would, this, this particular, um, feature would, would normally take me about, I don't know, hour, hour and a half to accomplish. And then I was watching a, um, a, a, a um, something on Adobe. Oh, no, it was actually Skillshare. I was watching something on Skillshare. And the designer was going through going through their project and was in the same situation that I was in. And they clicked a button and it was set. Wow. And yeah. the button was there the whole time. It's in a drop down menu. And so I stopped the video. I went over to the, to the project. And I, cl I clicked on what I want. I clicked on the button. And boom, it was done. Yeah, so that's an hour and a half saved of my time, an hour and a half saved of my client now doesn't have to pay me. So they're saving money. Yeah, it's it's such a win win. And even though I've been doing this for so long, there's still so much out there that I could be learning and so much more out there for me to learn. Yeah, you no, know, I've, 
only scratched the surface of what I could learn as a designer. And it's exciting. And it's, it's exciting to, to, to continue to learn and continue to grow. Yeah. Well, speaking of that, let's get into what you do. Fat Bassett Design um, started by you, Jim. 20 yeah. years of experience. We get some cool things in the background. And yeah. first, the, the, the name is, is, is very nice. Mm, mm. Coffee. We right. need to get you your coffee. Yep. That's no, no. Sorry about that. No, no. <laughs> no. Um, yes. The name Fat Bassett Design. So uh, we, we had this, um, this Bassett Hound named Josie. And yeah. she was just a love of our lives. Um, you know, funny enough, when we first uh, got a dog, my wife, Nicole, and I, uh, I didn't, I at first didn't want a dog. I was hesitant. And then I said, okay, if we're going to get a dog, I want a big athletic dog that I can go hiking and running with. We didn't get that at all. Um, I was over two in that fight. So we ended up getting a basset hound. And from day one, I was wrapped around her little paw oh. and she followed me everywhere. She was just, just the, the light of my day. Um, and sadly she passed away back in 2016, but at the time I was going through some like career transitions. And I think a lot of people do this at a certain point where I had this amazing job at, at Sam Adams designing packaging and point of sale and, and tap handle stuff that was seen all around the country. It was really cool. Nice. Um, but I just needed a change. I needed, you know, I, I, I once uh, read that um, oh, I'm going to butcher the butcher the quote, but essentially Sometimes even the best of circumstances change is necessary. Yeah. Now this was one of those instances. So, so I, I left Sam Adams. I, I actually taught for a little bit at Keefe Tech. Um, and then I started doing freelance work and the freelance work started catching up and taking me like into like 11 o'clock at night after I was done with school. So at a certain point I had to choose and the name Fat Bassett started as kind of a joke. You know, my wife and I would joke, oh, when we retire, we'll start Fat Bassett Coffee Shop. <clears throat> and then it kind of, when when I started freelancing, it started to grow and I started getting more clients and it's like, well, I need to start a business. That name just felt so natural. Yeah. Um, I've got this big fat Bassett hound by my side. We joke about the name. It's a little funny, a little you know, a, a little humbling, a little self-deprecating. It's, it's, I, I just, it just made me laugh. It made me smile. And that's really what I want to do through my work is make the clients excited and, and smile and, and kind of uh, appreciate not only the process, but the end result that then helps their business grow. Yeah. So the name came from my big fat bass and hound Josie. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, like I said, she passed away, but she's, she kind of lives on through, through this, this company. Yeah. That's a, that's a very inspirational story too. You know, when you're, when you're talking to clients and you're telling them about the name. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's memorable really, too. That's, yeah. that's the cool part. It's very memorable. Now, did you ever make a logo of her? Is she anywhere? Yes. Yeah. Actually here, I'll, there's a logo on the website and I've got stickers here. So this, oh, actually, I can show you this too, the coffee mug. Oh yeah, that's awesome. That's our, that's yeah. our logo, the, yep. the big fat basset hound. I, I don't have it on any apparel or anything, but yeah. I'll send you a bunch of stickers. Yeah, nice. Um, but that's essentially, we, we got stickers, we've got it on the website on um, all of our social media channels. Um, but that's it, that, and that's a literal drawing of her. She was sitting out in our driveway one day, just looking at nothing. Yeah. I just happened to take a picture of her and it's actually hanging up on my wall. And it was, it was way before I even thought of starting Fat Bassett. But I, I, I looked at that picture over and over again. I was like, that's just really cool. It's yeah. just, it's, I, it's, it makes up all the pillars of what make a good logo and that it's memorable. It's timeless. It's, it's, it's appropriate. Um, it's, uh, it, it's, it's versatile. Um, so I was like, well, why not do that? You know, yeah. It's there. It, it's, it, it, it makes sense. And, you know, I, the cool thing about that is I see it all over the place now. And, you know, I'll send people stickers if they ask them, if they ask for them. And I see them on cars. I see them on like street signs. That's awesome. And, and it's, I see them in breweries. And it's cool to think like, I didn't put them there. Somebody else thought of me and put it there. It's very humbling. It, it's yeah. Pretty cool. we'll, we'll take them and we will definitely put them all yeah, over. I'll, the I'll send you a bunch yeah. of them. Sure. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. Uh, my girlfriend has pit bulls and I never, you know, I've always been a, like the golden retriever type of dog or, and I, it sounds like you're similar, but I am so smitten by these pit bulls. They're two girls and I, they are the sweetest dogs 
in the world. Oh. Like, yeah, it's, it's like weird. they teach us lessons, right? Oh, oh, absolutely. I, I, I can't. I've lost count of the number of lessons I've learned from having dogs and the yeah. most of which is patience. Yeah. Um, and I think right after that is just being grateful. You know, these, these yeah. dogs, you walk in the door after being outside from getting the mail <laughs> and you walk in and it's like, you've been gone for a year and a half. Yeah. And, and, and I love that. It makes you really kind of appreciate and, and just be grateful and it's easy to it's easy to lose sight of that but it's but it's also good to get that little reminder and yeah. you and I are like one and the same in that you know maybe we weren't we, we weren't accepting of the idea of these dogs at first yeah but we can we certainly love them and appreciate them now and can't probably can't see our lives without them yeah uh, yeah the way the dogs look at me it's 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 like painful sometimes you know oh God, it kills me when I I can't look back when I'm leaving yeah, that's, that's what I've learned. If I look back when I'm leaving, that they're coming with me. Yeah, I can't take that look. <laughs> so I have a, a loaded question for you because yep. I I love creative people. I I think I think in like sports people, like uh, musicians, musicians mm -hmm. like athletes. We, I think it's just because we're all we have creative things. So what take what goes through your mind or the process when you get? I'm looking back at these cans. So someone approaches you. Do they give you a blueprint of what they want? Or is it sometimes, hey, we need a logo? And how in the world do you start that process? No, that's that's a fair question. Um, it's it's very, you have to kind of be a psychologist. Okay. Um, so what I do is I have a list of questions that I get to ask. And because you're right, it, it seems like it's just, oh, you know, Mike, you need a logo? All right, yeah, I'll work something up. But it, it really gets more involved and more time consuming than just that. If, sure. if you were going to ask me for a logo today, it would take me about three weeks to get back to you. Um, and the reason is, is again, it's, it's playing psychologist. I ask you, I've got a, a three page questionnaire that I ask every prospective client, whether they're looking to have packaging designed or if they're looking to have a logo designed. Um, and it just goes very in depth all the way down to what do you want people to think when they see this? Um, what are your objectives? And the objective could be, um, I want this to look more premium, or I want the, I want this to feel luxurious, or I want this to feel more handcrafted. So all of those, all of those adjectives, all of those words, all of those phrases, they all mean something to me in one way, shape or form. Um, if somebody, for instance, says this needs to be soft and approachable, then I know if it's for a logo, it shouldn't have any sharp edges. Okay. Sharp edges are very aggressive. Hmm. So little lessons like that that you learn along the way and, and going on the same line, if somebody says, I want something that's really fast and aggressive, well, I'm probably not going to use baby blue and a light purple. You know, you're gotcha. probably going to yeah. use like some darker, more, more aggressive tones like blues, blacks, reds. Uh, so, so it's, it's experience, it's playing psychologist, um, and then taking all of that information and really just start sketching and you're using all that information, you're sketching these different ideas and a lot of them are just crap. And, and it, if for any younger designers out there watching this or even older, we, we all know that a lot of the stuff that, that we put down on paper at first is crap because what you're doing is you're really flushing out every idea you have every gotcha. idea. yeah yeah and an exercise i like to do um is uh anytime like i give a like i'll go to framingham state once in a while this is before the pandemic and i'll speak to professor dowling's class exercise i like to do to get out ideas is you hold up a a yellow triangle a green square and a red circle and each one you hold up you say okay here is a yellow triangle you got 30 seconds to write down everything you think of when you see this. Huh. And you realize people will just write down, slow down, stoplight, um, pyramid, things like it takes them 30 seconds. And then you kind of tell them like, okay, you've gotten all the bad ideas out of your head. Now really dig deeper, let your mind go. And if you're looking at a yellow triangle, you might just start thinking after you get out all those bad ideas, after you went from, you know, slow down, stoplight, pyramid, then you go, Egypt, the Nile, water, yeah. sand, sky, cloud, sun, moon, stars, Pluto, you know, Mickey Mouse, and you just really start diving deeper. And that's what 
sketching is. It gets out all that crap, all those ideas, and lets you focus on those objectives. So you go from there, then you pick out a few that you feel like have potential. You make some, you sketch out some rough drafts. Then you take that and you put it on the computer screen and you start building it on the computer. And you know, as you're building these, you're looking at that questionnaire and you're looking at those objectives and you say, okay, is this design following these objectives, following this roadmap that, you know, Mike told me that he wanted, you know, he wanted it to look more premium, more luxurious. Do these concepts that I have on screen follow that? And if so, I keep going. If they don't, I scrap it and kind of start over. Um, so you, you continue to build through there. And then um, I, I schedule a meeting with you and we go over the concepts and it's, it's kind of like, uh, you know, the show Mad Men. Yeah. At that point, it's kind of like Mad Men. You, know, you walk into a room or, I mean, in this case here, um, and I pitch you the ideas. Um, we're more than likely not smoking and drinking whiskey, but it's still, it's still, you're still going through the creative process and, and, you know, I you pitch you these different ideas and, you know, you say, you know, Jim, I like this one, but I don't like that one. I like parts of this one, parts of that one. I love this one. And it's basically just one big collaboration and yeah. it could be, you love one of the ideas and we move forward right away, or it could be, you like one of the ideas, but you see potential for changes. And, and then we start collaborating. And that's the thing you really got to stress in the design field is it's a, it's a collaboration, you know, and similar to sports, there's a coach and a player, there's a collaboration between the two of how, you know, how one feels like when they're hitting versus what they're doing with their mechanics. There is so much more involved with that, that where you need that team to be able to bounce ideas back and forth. Yeah. Cause the, the person, the company, they want something that's going to sell. Yes. Where yes. maybe sometimes their vision is obviously different than yours, where you can yeah. present a side where, hey, this logo can do this. Yeah. Absolutely. You, yeah. you have to be open. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. have to be open. And I'm, you know, one of the points you bring up is, you know, the company having an idea. What I, what I like to do is present three options. It's, and, and whether it's packaging or logo design, there's always at least three options. And there's the first option is always what they asked for. Kind of this is, you know, you know, Mike, you said you wanted, you know, uh, Antonellis Broadcasting with a big microphone above it. All right, here's here's option one. Yeah. The second option would be us kind of taking that a little further and saying, here's something we thought might be a little cooler, might, might, it still follows these objectives, but it might work a little bit more in your favor based on everything you told us. And then option three is out of left field. And pardon the, pardon the, the baseball, yeah. ball, it is out of left field. It's something that you didn't expect. It's something that's just wild and crazy. And it's there as an option, but it's also there to make you think and to make you go, wow, I never thought of something like that. Let me really rethink what I'm doing with, with this business and these ideas and see if, you know, we want to go down a different path. Yeah. So it's, it's, and that's really kind of the end all be all is to get you, get you to think differently about graphic design, get you to think differently about how graphic design and design in general and branding can really work in your favor, as opposed to just a tool to get your name and business out there. Yeah. So is mainly the beer cans, is that, is that a bulk of your business? Yeah, I'd say that's the lion's share of my business is, um, is designing uh, beer labels, beer packaging. Um, I design basically anything, everything within the, within the beer space from um, beer and bottle labels to 12 packs and six packs uh, to cases to those big displays you see in, in liquor stores, um, uh, t-shirts, hats, you know, everything within the beer space I, I do or have done in the past. Um, it's, it's a blast. I love it. Um, it's, it started with working at Sam Adams and then that foundation kind of carried over into what I'm doing now. And it's, you know, beer people are good people. Yeah. And it, it's rare to find, you know, a jerk in the beer industry. You know, yeah. Everyone's, everyone's just really nice. And that's, that's what I gravitate towards are, are, are good people and people that are out there trying to do the right thing. Um, they're, they're just trying to bring people together and, and just have a beer together. Yeah. Um, obviously right now it's a little tougher, but, but still the, the, the tools and the opportunities are there. And, and that's what I love doing. I love working with people who are passionate about what they do. And that's what a lot of beer people are. 
And lastly, I'll ask you for younger people that this is what I tell younger people that get into any kind of creative field. It's, it's like working out. You need to develop that muscle, just oh, yeah. whatever it is. I have sometimes people go, this is an opportunity, but no one's going to hear me, but I get to do games. I, I just, you just got to do it. Right. Oh God. Yeah. 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 Oh, you can, I could just let you go. That's yeah. that it. Just, just start. Just all you have the, the hardest thing to do is to start. Yeah. No matter what it is, the hardest thing to do is, is to, is to actually get started. And, and you're right. You know, you, you know, you, you can start a YouTube um, or a podcast. We'll just say a podcast is an easy one. You can start yeah. a podcast and no one could be listening, yep. but you still do it. You go out there and you do it every day because sooner or later, a person's going to listen. Then two, then five, then 20. And it's going to grow and it's going to grow, but it's not, you can't let it grow until you, you actually start. And something that I always keep in mind, I actually have it as a reminder on my to-do list. So I see it every day is to remember the, the Chinese bamboo tree. And anyone watching this, I, I apologize if I get this wrong, but from what I heard, a, Ch a Chinese bamboo tree, you plant the seed and nothing happens for five years but you continue to water it. You continue to water it. You can every day you continue to water it. And after five years, I think over the course of like a couple of weeks, it sprouts and becomes this huge tree. Nice. But it doesn't happen unless you water it for those first five years. Yep. And that's what starting a business or starting anything that you're really passionate about. You know, if you're an accountant right now and you secretly want to be a baker, well, you got to start baking at some point. You, you have to, you have to, after work, you get home and start baking. And, and if you don't, it's never going to happen. And all you'll say is, oh, I wish I could have been. Just start, find yeah. some time, put, you know, turn off Netflix for an hour and a half and, and, and start doing this. And if it's something you love, it'll be, it'll come easy to you and you'll get excited. If not, you move on to something else, but you have to just start. That's it. Perfect, Jim. That was awesome.